to introduce Nabeen Malikar. He's uh, originally from uh, Albany as well. Uh, was a former student of uh, Kevin Knuth's. And uh, he's going to be talking about uh, learning algor algorithms. So. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Um, first, of all, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for the opportunity to present my work in the Maxent conference. Um, basically, we are working on to design and uh, construct the robotic instruments, mm -hmm. um, which can ask the questions, design the experiments, and um, collaborate probably um, most possibly with each other, uh, so that they can go towards solving the common goal. Given given uh, given that we have the model based uh, problem, so. Uh, the time actually feels quite right now because um, um, because of the comprehensive success of the Bayesian method in last few decades and uh, the the development in the the theory of the Bayesian experimental design and the the collective work of Professor uh, Knuth, which actually includes the um, question theoretic experimental design approach to the um, uh, uh, to building and demonstrating such principle. Um, which as which actually has become viable now. We actually had um, last year demonstrated um, the robotic instrument. Um, this actually was constructed in 2007 by Professor Knuth, and uh, I also had demonstrated a, an algorithm uh, for searching the um, the entropy space. Anyway, but the the robot here actually has this um, uh, light sensor over here. Um, and then based upon the light intensity that it observes at any point on the field, it has to characterize this white circle in the ba black background. And it is only allowed to have the point observations. You cannot scan the, the surface uh, as you might conceive of doing it. Uh, so, so we would like to characterize it. And it's pretty much a straightforward problem. But the next problem that we would like to do, which actually would be pretty nice to have, is can we actually design um, the experimental setup in such a way that two robots collaborate with each other and work towards solving the given problem? So um, we will apply the logic of questions. And uh, uh, we are influenced by the information, information theory. And basically, we will implement the inquiry calculus that was developed by Professor Knuth. And we will show, illustrate uh, how we implemented the um, collaborative experimental design by two of these, two of these um, robotic instruments. Uh, what is nice about this formulation is that uh, although we are demonstrating two robots here, uh, it can be generalized to multiple robots. And we call them uh, intelligent agents. Um, so basically, um, a brief summary of the logic of questions. Uh, the question theoretic approach of um, Professor Knuth considers three space. The state space, which describes the system. The hypothesis space, which describes what we know about the system. And the inquiry space, which describes what can potentially be known about the system. I can do this. The state space actually um, has the elements which are mutually exclusive to each other. And um, basically, I'm denoting them as xa, xp, and xc. The hypothesis space is the lattice constructed by the power set, construction of the um, states, basically ordered by the set inclusion relations. And uh, it is basically a Boolean lattice. Here, the uh, usual set um, theoretic notation um, R and N becomes very handy. And the logical R, logical R is being implemented by the set union. And the logical AND is being implemented by the set intersection. The inquiry space, which is um, more interesting to us, is constructed by taking the downset of the statements ordered by the set inclusion relations. The 
space is formed from the Boolean hypo if the space is formed from the Boolean hypothesis, then it is a free distribution distributive lattice. And the elements of this space is um, elements of this space are called questions. Here in this notation, if the the relationship between these two elements x and y are denoted as x uh, and y includes x, then we what we can say is x answers y. That means by answering x, you can you you actually answer y. So there is some degree of inclusion relation going on. Um, the measure that we use in hypothesis space is probability and the measure that we use in inquiry space is entropy. And this, there is one nice spot in this inquiry space which is called central issue. If you can resolve the central issue then basically you have resolved the, um, the problem or you can actually um, you have uh, quite a grip on the problem. So this one slide actually is dedicated to the three spaces, uh, state space, hypothesis space and the inquiry space, uh, power set, uh, down set construction. Just wanted to um, highlight on that one. Now we have the, we have quite nice theoretical formulation of questions by Professor Knuth and we wanted to uh, compute uh, or crunch some number with the questions. And we'll see how we um, go forward. The, um, the formulation of Richard Cox actually defines the question as the set of all possible logical statements that can answer it. And uh, um, the Knuth's formulation actually extends Cox's idea and defines the question as the downset of all logical statements. Um, the mathematical details of this, uh, this can be found by uh, the papers of last about 10 years by Professor Knuth and he also hinted some of it in yesterday's presentations. He, um, what, is, um, what is really interesting is that without loss of any generality, he actually um, shows that the relevance of the questions, let's say uh, a P uh, element, let's say P, is actually, um, sorry, question P with respect to the central issue is given by the entropy. So we have this measure here and we would like to use that uh, the question theoretic formulations um, to solve our problem. Back to the problem uh, where we had the black uh, white circle in the black background and uh, uh, we would like to characterize it. That's the problem statement and uh, the question is whether we can do it in a collaborative fashion. Basically, um, it's a three parameter simple problem, right? The central issue would be something like precisely what is the circle? If you, if you can define whether the circle is here or here or somewhere else, you actually have solved the problem. But we cannot exactly ask that question because we don't have the answer to that problem. So we have to, um, we have to ask other questions which might be maximally relevant towards solving this problem by uh, or, or maximally relevant to the with respect to the central issue. Let's um, view it um, how what we can uh, what we can do with with it. This E1 actually denotes denotes a place on the field and that is an experiment. The experiment consists of measuring the reflected light intensity that was uh, hanging on the end of that Lego robot. So basically it flashes the light, collects back the intensity and we do the data analysis afterwards. So, so basically measuring the intensity at this point is an experiment and uh, we are asking the question such as what is the intensity over there? Is it measuring the white, uh, is it measuring the data which is corresponding to the white surface or the black surface? So, so let's, sup let's suppose that we have a um, few candidates of the um, uh, circles here. Uh, by, by, by the very fact that we have this model-based uh, model problem, if this point is inside the circle, then it will be predicted that these circles are now being co um, collected as the um, one set of uh, samples or uh, uh, one set of proposals and the these black which actually are not including this um, point experimental point are being classified as another set. So basically 
based upon the outcomes right whether this point is inside the circle or outside the circle we have we have this binary partition of the questions these are the um, issues so so having 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 formulated the problem in the question theoretic formulation now now we would like to see whether we can implement the principle of um, some principle of collaboration um, now what we can see here is by selecting the particular location of the experiment that the first robot decided to take the measurement right um, it has partitioned the um, the question space into two sets that was indicated in the previous slide similarly the second robot by selecting the another measurement location hopefully it defines the it, it divides the part uh, the question space into another partition and jointly they partition this space into four regions either both of them are going to measure white or both of them are going to measure black or one of them is going to measure white and other is measure, going to measure black so so by by very construction here this robot by constructing the uh, experiment E1 and the second robot by constructing experiment E2 are partitioning the space and and this because of the joint partitions that we have we can we can say that the relevance of the two experiment given by the joint uh, is given by the joint entropy of the predictions out of the experiments so here we can see this relevance of the uh, i mean the degree to which um, uh, the degree to which experiment e1 uh, jointly with e2 answers the um, the uh, relevance uh, sorry uh, the central issue is given by the joint entropy where pa denotes the um, the probability that uh, the both of the uh, both of the experiments or both of the robotic exper experiment will be coming as white whereas pb denotes the probability whether it uh, the first measurement of the first measurement location is white and the second is black and uh, similarly uh, pc and pd uh, gives the probabilities so now um, we we did some simulation with it and uh, here um, we are demonstrating an entropy map here basically uh, what's happening here is that we consider every point on this space as the um, the candidate experiment so you uh, the robot could go anywhere and take the measurement there but we don't want to do that these white circles are the samples drawn from the posterior and uh, given that we have the posterior samples for every point on the field we can have the uh, distribution of the predictions and based upon those distribution of the predictions we can uh, compute the entropy we compute the entropy by using the histogram method and this um, was there a question no and then the entropy is being uh, represented here with the uh, some sort of color map here the point which corresponds to the maximum entropy in this entropy map which is being indicated by the green dot here actually um, is the point which bears maximum relevance towards solving our problem if we were to implement only one robot and we also have um, done the same problem using the uh, Bayesian experimental design uh, approach and we have found that it, it corresponds to the same point any question on this map okay good this is the mutual information map well what we have done is simply we have again constructed the uh, map out of the uh, scalar values that we obtained by taking considering um, the mutual information between the point selected point this green dot and all other points and what is interesting to see here is that um, the places which are very close by to this experiment shares quite a bit uh, quite nice amount of mutual information with the selected instrument uh, selected experiment here 
and we can say that these are the uh, these might be the re uh, redundant information which actually being which are being shared by the um, the first experiment that we have decided and the candidate experiment which are nearby. Um, this is the joint entropy map where we have uh, computed the joint entropy of all the candidate points with respect um, given that we have this experiment E1. So we are computing the joint entropy here and we have, uh, we have selected this, um, this point which corresponds to the maximum joint entropy. And uh, it's quite nice that um, we have this, these two points which um, are not very close to each other and you can see that um, the, the point where the um, mutual information between these two were high, very high and now goes low for the joint entropy map. So by, by finding the point where which maximizes the joint entropy between the, um, the first robot, uh, the first experiment and the second one, we can say that it maximizes the joint entropy, it maximizes the relevance of the, the joint, question, joint questions that are being posed and minimizes the, informa uh, mutual, uh, sorry, minimizes the information redundancy that could, have, uh, that could have been there around this area. Any question on this slide? Okay, it's a simple idea. Um, so now uh, we just wanted to, I mean we have this um, formalism, now we want to see whether we can go anywhere with this, um, this, uh, this formalism. So we wanted to see whether it will converge. Um, again here we uh, randomly selected two points. Um, this point over here corresponds to the maximum entropy and we uh, based upon this one we are actually displaying the joint entropy map and it has been properly scaled. So this one is maximum joint entropy that corresponds um, uh, uh, maximum joint entropy that actually maximizes the relevance of the, um, the, um, the experiments that can be posed, that can be conducted jointly. Now I will demonstrate uh, uh, um, anima an animation. This actually um, converges quite fast, quite, ni quite nicely. One of the things that I would like to point here is the fact that um, the points, the white point and the yellow point, um, the first experiment and the second, exp I mean the first robotic deployment and the second exp uh, robotic deployment that we can do jointly actually uh, quite nicely goes on the opposite side of the circles to explore. And it is not, um, it is, there is no strategy that we have implemented here. It automatically happens. It automatically selects the point which are farthest away. And it makes sense if you want to be efficiently exploring to solve the problem. Here again, I'm displaying it. You can, um, my bad color, choice of the color, this yellow, or oh, where is that? Okay. There, yeah. So it, it is quite nicely doing that. And we also um, uh, looked into the, the rate of the convergence here. Um, the, the error bar of the estimated parameters are given here because it is simulation, we, we know the truth value, right? So, so we can actually compare and we can stop the iteration whenever uh, we, we reach to the desired, um, desired level of precision, let's say. So we, we do that and um, for our case, uh, we stopped it uh, for at 14, 14th iterations. Uh, whereas, uh, if we do, uh, I mean, um, if we implement only one robot, it takes uh, about the double number of um, observations that we have to do before we can converge to the same level of precision. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, in two of your plots, there, the error speak up, please speak up. In two of your plots, the error bars don't contain the true value till quite late. Uh, we record. Um. Oh, you mean the, okay, I see. This, okay, okay, I see. If the, um, Can you repeat the question? what he was asking was that um, I have the inference here, but this inference doesn't, inv uh, doesn't include this, um, this true value here, right? Okay. Um, basically, this is, um, this is quite interesting because um, in some of the cases, what happens is that whenever we are exploring, uh, uh, the, the robot decides to, uh, you know, ro robot, 
up to the up to the time when it has found one location where it is white it keeps on exploring and it you know um, it decides the experiment which it thought might have been useful but it is not so even though uh, even though um, it is not it is not i mean it is being inferred but that's the wrong value because um, we can see that the error bar is pretty high here does that answer your question it is basically learning iteratively here although it doesn't include the um, the level of precision that you wanted i mean you are you are just taking the measurement somewhere blankly and based upon that one data you probably cannot infer what the parameter of the circle circles are um quite quite simple idea um so we have basically implemented the order theoretic approach in designing the collaborative experiment um, we we call it we would like to call it the principle of information based collaboration um, uh, we we argue that we we propose that the joint entropy gives the measure of the relevance of the questions which can be posed by the two intelligent agents which are acting autom autonomously and that um, maximization of joint maximization of joint entropy maximizes the relevant of the joint questions with respect to the central issue and that um, it reduces by maximizing the joint entropy it reduces the information redundancy between the questions that you could have posed um, uh, we 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 would like to implement the the principle um, for swarm of robots because uh, this principle seems nice that you can have multiple robots which can be deployed autonomously and uh, we are working on developing currently we are working on to develop a uh, quadcopter and uh, um, the the two our two of our group members william and brian in ut dallas and uh, these are my references um, thank you for your patience and time Thanks, Naveen. Questions? Uh, can you comment on the computational effort? Because if you want to apply this approach to a swarm of agents, uh, it has better to scale, not uh, in an exponential way. Yes, um, that's great. The nice thing about this one is that there is one central um, computing engine which is doing all the processing, right? And then um, uh, let's look into the entropy map here. The, the computation over here um, is going to be, um, I think, similar, just going to, um, not going exponentially, but going to, if you have two, maybe double. If you have three, maybe triple. So it's, it's not going to go exponentially because it is going to be computed in the same grid. By the uh, by, the single processing engine, the both of them are being uh, uh, controlled by one agent. I mean, one uh, one processing center, and these are two agents. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask: uh, in your joint entropy map animated version, you had the animation of uh, two robots collaborating. Correct. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, what is the difference if there would be just one robot? in uh, computational cost um, one robot against two of them computationally this is little bit more intensive um, the i think the nice feature of this one is that we have we have um, demonstrated that two robots when collaborated with collaborate with each other without giving giving any goal here they they decide to take the measurement in such a way that uh, they can be more, much more efficient with each other. So um, computationally, uh, I think it's going to be double the time because we are going to compute the uh, entropy, at, uh, entropy and joint entropy again, right? But um, I think the principle is nice. And um, I, I worked on to develop uh, an entropy-based um, method uh, of exploring the entropy space without computing everywhere. And we hope to implement that um, sampling, uh, I mean, which was inspired by Professor Skilling's uh, um, uh, method to, to actually find the maximally relevant experiments, you know, without computing the entropy everywhere. So um, that's the, the work in progress. We, we, have to, we have to work on that one. Yeah.
So I'd like to follow, if I may, um, on the, the question about the sure, error bars. Uh -huh. And I, I apologize for being so nitpicky, but this is a stats conference. So <laughs> what's, con what's confusing me here, <laughs> you're, sorry. <laughs> I, would, I would expect that error bars, by whatever definition, ought to include the true value most of the time. And what I'm seeing is, for the black and red lines, uh, I mean, until the error bars become one pixel wide, they continue to not include the true value. Now, and you sort of explain why, why about the mechanics of the problem that might be happening, but it, it worries me that something fishy is going on, either that these are not really error bars, or that in the software, the program is not accurately estimating what it knows. It seems to believe that it knows a lot more than it does. And I'm just a bit confused. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, it, it comes down to whether you want to take the um, mode or mean. In, in this case, what we did was we, uh, we, to, we took the uh, weighted average of the sample, okay? And we, we computed the weighted average. Therefore, um, therefore, the error bar might not have been the, the one which you might have been happier with. Um, maybe I can try uh, uh, coming. Uh, I can try uh, finding a solution where, I mean, uh, try computing the the modal value of this inferred parameter and see whether the the deviations from the the, the mean actually gives some 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 sense. So, I mean, I, I can try that. But but yeah, that, thank you for pointing that out. Um, I mean, to me, it it seems that yeah, I can see what you're saying. But to me, it seems that they are converging and they are learning. And some of the some of the measurements that they t decide in the initial explorations are really not relevant because see, it decided to take the measurement there. But you have to you have to face with uh, the fact, right, whether the circle was there or not. So you have to take the measurement there, and you have to infer from that bad data. I'm bad because we know where the circle is. So I think um, it's happening that. But thank you for pointing that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I picked up on that point myself. Uh, another possibility for explaining that might be that this just happened to be this particular random starting point, and that that starting point, like all others, would then decay and converge properly. Some of them would cover, some of them wouldn't. So it could be just that. But I think you're right. It's something that you need to look at. Mm. <coughs> Any more questions? Yes. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Um, have you given any thought to addressing the optimum number of robots working together to do a search? That's a great question. Um, thank you. Um, one of the one of the interesting problem that comes up over here is as. Uh, as Ronald just also pointed out, um, it implies um, how many, how much budget do you have? Is it the time budget that you have? Is it the cost budget that you have? So, um, in the future explorations, maybe it, it's worth um, uh, exploring whether we can implement those extra set of information or our resources that we have, and see whether we want to implement one robot. You know, you want to have two Hubble, Hubble Space Telescope looking, uh, one is enough, something like that. So, so how many robots would you like to deploy uh, based upon the fact that you have, let's say, five million? Uh, you know, you have this budget, or maybe the time constraint. So it would be really nice um, explorations or, or study to see. Yeah. yeah. Two more questions. First of all, can I just clear something up? The, the, the white point and the blue and the, the white square and the, and the yellow square, is that where each of the respective robots are really sure that they're sitting right on the circle? Um, okay. Um, this one is actually um, the, the simulation that we did, right? So what happened was that in our, um, okay, here, uh, here comes the backup slide. Sorry. I'm thankful to them. So, uh, sorry, sorry. Come on. The right questions. No, no, that <laughs> whole. <laughs> 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 
that was a good question. Um, this one actually was the entropy map constructed for one robot and uh, I had constructed another um, entropy map which I did not show which included the, the region which was accessible to the second robot. So we have that information and based upon those we can actually deploy uh, or decide whether you want to send the robot there or not because if it is not accessible and it, it wants to go there you will crash the robot. Um, in the case of simulation um, I'm not con I'm not constrained by that physical measure mm -hmm. so uh, it was okay for me to um, simulate those problems. Because with, with respect to the question that was just asked about the, the optimum number of robots, uh, at least by hand signs, I, I gathered that two of us in the room immediately concluded that three was the optimum number. And I was wondering whether you expect if you'd run your system with three robots, that you'd have the three uh, what I'll call preferred points sitting at 120 degrees from each other like a Mercedes-Benz mm. star. And that would really pin the circle down. Mm. Do the robots know how big the circle is? Um, I didn't think they did. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, we, we give them the oh, prior yeah. information about what's happening, but no. Yeah. Did I understand your question? Yeah. Okay. There's just yeah. one of the things that occurred to me. In multidimensional exploration, basically what this is, is a multidimensional exploration problem. Uh, Gibbs sampling, going along one axis and then the other and then first one, going one axis at a time is often not too bad in exploration strategy. Mm -hmm. And the analogy with this one would be just changing one robot at a time. After all, you've got all the other n minus one of them sitting there and you change one and then you change this one and then you change that one. And that may not be very different from changing all n at once, but in that case you only need one robot. Um, I have to think about that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the nice thing about this one is that, okay, you, you, I see what you're saying, but okay, um, let, me, let me answer that. It's, it's a nice question. Why, right? Why do you love two robots? Do uh, you really go faster than half of, you know, the, no, the, the, the twice thing, one? I think um, it comes down to the, um, the budget issue, but if, if you are rich and if you have many robots, what I can say is this, um, this exploration, is quite different than the one robotic exploration. I, I wish I had put the uh, the side by side comparison. Uh, where what ha what's happening is that um, the the joint entropy that we have here actually minimizes the redundancy uh, information redundancy that could have been there if you were impl imp implementing maybe um, a second robot or, or the same robot based upon the first measurement. We'll take this offline. Okay. Let's thank the speaker. Thank you.